You want to save us both some time and tell me what these mods do before I take you to prison or after? Okay, so it's been a couple months since I've done one of these videos, and the last video seemed to have a very positive reception, so I thought it would be a good idea to drop another one of them, because there are still way too many useless abilities that need to be covered. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some more useless superpowers to have in real life. Now before I start mentioning some new abilities, I wanted to address some of the grievances in the last video because there were quite a bit of them. First off, I want to address a Kainu's Devil Fruit again, the Magma Magma Fruit, and I will stand on this fruit being garbage in real life, because seriously, this fruit is way too destructive to even apply to real life scenarios. Sure, there's the Logi Intangibility, but if you have the choice of Logia, there are way better and more convenient options. With this fruit, your only options are to either continue your regular life or become a world-renowned criminal. More on that later. And don't tell me that you'll be the best hero with this fruit because you will be a bigger threat to civilians than any other villain could hope for. We already know how Akainu was moving during Marine Ford. Imagine you miss a magma fist and just destroy someone's car. Or shoot, you put a crater through a building. Heck, you might even burn someone to ashes by accident. You're gonna be getting some type of lawsuit and getting put in jail for arson. Then there's Luffy's gum gum fruit, which I'll admit that I've sold a bit short. I forgot to mention that there is the immunity to blunt damage, so realistically the only problem you'd be having would be learning how to actually control the stretching. But the immunity to blunt damage is probably the only benefit you'll get from it, mostly because electricity immunity is fairly niche. It's still alright, but it's not the crazy gear 5 shenanigans that you see in the series. Also, the imagination portion of this fruit is not as potent as some of y'all think. Don't go around thinking that you're going to be summoning meteors from the sky just because you imagined it. And then finally, I found that many comments shared a similar tone with the possibility of gaining superpowers. Just become a criminal. I've come to realize that it's possible that my audience consists of a lot more menaces than I previously thought because some of y'all can't be trusted with powers. Now, contrary to popular belief, I am not a criminal nor do I want to be a criminal if I had powers. Sure, no one would be able to stop you in theory, but then you gotta live the whole criminal lifestyle like not associating with your family to preserve their safety, amongst other things, which is a lot less convenient than one would think. Then there are also people who are talking about world domination and I believe that you guys should never ever get your hands on power. You'd be the mustache twirling villain that starts murking people for no reason. So with all that out of the way, it's time to finally talk about the first useless power on the list. One for all. Now this power is actually one of the worst you can get in real life in my opinion due to how much recoil there is on your body. First off, you can't even think about using one for all at full strength ever unless it's a life or death situation. Like I'm talking about fate of the universe on the line or the Martians have the death beam pointed at earth, you better hit it. Cause there are way too many injuries that come with the full power punch. This man Deku was breaking his arms each time he used a full power Detroit smash. And this was after having a decent amount of training with all might your limbs might actually explode off your body if you try to punch someone recklessly and personally i think a detached limb would guarantee a trip to the er plus i know for a fact no one watching this video got the money to deal with broken arms or legs every other week and plus deku was getting his arms healed by recovery girl so he ain't have to spend much time recovering from his injuries you on the other hand will be waiting a calm three months to recover from shattered bones not to mention the fact that deku was suffering long lasting damage after using his arms too much so you can expect that to happen to you as well if you throw hands too much but besides the potential of getting OD hospital bills, you also gotta remember that there's a chance you won't even be able to fulfill the full potential of one for all. Deku had so many resources at his disposal to help him train, and we don't have those UA level training facilities in the real world. Even if you manage to learn full cowling, you better be real slow with trying to raise the power of it. Number one, you're gonna have to be training by yourself because I don't expect any human on earth wanting to fight with someone who can punch out city blocks with ease. Number two, you're gonna have to follow the steps Deku was taking to a T and try your best not to mess up horrifically. What are you gonna do? You go 20% full cowling immediately? Immediately, that's just asking to mess up your body. And don't even talk to me about the other quirks in One For All. We saw how much mayhem was caused when Deku first discovered Black Whip. If this happens in public with a bunch of people around, you're gonna have a J. Jonah Jameson on your head every single time you try to walk around the city. I can't stand Spider Man! I can't stand him! I hate him! Staying in the My Hero verse, we got Dobby's cremation quirk, but honestly, this part is going to be mostly about Dobby, because it's truly a horrific combo for him. Essentially, Dobby's body is more resistant to cold temperatures than hot because of his mom, so anytime he uses his fire, he gets burnt, which means that he can't even use his power for real without literally cooking his skin. If you were in Dobby's situation, why would you ever use this quirk? It only seems to hurt you. Like, sure, you got strong flames, but I can get the same effect with an aerosol can and a lighter. Use this quirk too much and you'll just end up as a flaming corpse with no chance of recovery. I can see why bro was so mad with his brother, cause I would be tight too. You're basically the failed experiment of the family. Now the last quirk I want to cover again is this freaking tail quirk, cause I still got a lot of gripes with it. I talked about it in the first video, but let's be real. The channel was in a drastically different place than it is now. First off, I need you guys to level with me here. You guys can really call me anything like stupid, short, a fraud, whatever. But one thing I refuse to be called is crazy for calling this quirk garbage, because quite frankly, it's extremely useless. No matter what, you cannot convince me that this tail 
Mikhail wasn't just some result of some radiation mutation or something that got passed down genetically. The doctors probably saw this kid with the big tail and realized that this kid got no quirk and were like, you know what? Just tell the kid that the tail is his quirk, that should work. Like this thing just looks so inconvenient. I'm assuming that the tail just grew from the tailbone already in humans. So I can only imagine how annoying it would be to get clothes with this three foot appendage quite literally between your cheeks. You're gonna have to get your clothes tailor made or something. Also, any description of this quirk is actively coping. Heck, anyone who thinks this is some S tier quirk in general is just coping. Sturdy tail. Okay. I don't care about the agility or breaking metal or whatever. What are you going to do with this quirk? Don't think you're going to go speed blitzing anyone with this power as soon as you get it. Martial arts is like the only thing that can pair well with this quirk. And I know a large majority of us are not black belts in martial arts. So you got to spend like three years learning to try to make some use of this tail. But if you're already a black belt in martial arts, just stick with that. You don't need no tail for that. And some of y'all in the comments are going to be on my head about this part. So let's just make a hypothetical. Let's say Electro is running rampant in New York City. You use your tail to grab him, electrocuted. Try to jump in the air with your tail, electrocuted. Anything you do, you get body. And this will be very accurate to the show because I feel like I've only seen this guy get rocked. Next ability we got is another revisit. It's basically any big name key blast in Dragon Ball, like the Final Flash, the Kamehameha, Guy Like Gun, etc. Now I know this one will be a bit controversial because we've all tried to fire off a Kamehameha. It's just the rite of passage. And quite frankly, if someone gave me the option to take key blast as an ability, I would definitely take it. But that still doesn't eliminate the fact that the strongest forms of these key blasts are are way too strong to be practical in real life. Sure, the average pea shooter blast isn't blowing up the planet, but something like the final flash is a bit different. These blasts can level mountains easily. Heck, even charging one up is gonna be felt by a lot of people. And then there's the grim possibilities of missing the blast. What happens if you blow up the moon by accident? Or on purpose, I know how some of y'all be moving. You are running the risk of destroying so many things in the world every time you fire off one of these big name blasts. Legitimate question, what type of ops do you have in your life that requires a Gallic gun? Unless you are actively looking for violence and someone to blast some pistol with the switch is getting the job done the same way and i know a switch is illegal but these big name blasts might as well be illegal as well if you're new and enjoying the video so far you might as well subscribe we on the road to 50k so i'd appreciate it a lot anyways back to the video next up i want to talk about how bad being a ginger key would be in real life my friend brought it up to me after my last video and i thought it was a really good point we all know that being a ginger key in the naruto world is garbage you got organizations hunting you down and trying to murk you just because of the tailed beast inside of you and in the village most of the time once you dead and ostracizes you from society you get treated like a third class citizen in a grade a threat but in my opinion the societal problems would probably not be as big of a deal in our world the real issues start when you think about the fact that you have an actual demon inside of you and you have to try to control them because oh my goodness will these demons take the chance to run rampant if you get someone like shukaku you're cooked you can't get no sleep because shukaku will take control as soon as you hit the bed to be honest you gotta have your emotions completely unlocked because you run the risk of having the tail beast take over and i know there's a lot of people who would let their tailed beast run rampant in a moment of weakness you get your heart broken boom karama just destroyed half the city but there's the chance that you can manage to siphon off some of the power of the tailed beast even if you do that most of the forms are still garbage this man naruto's skin was burning and peeling off during transformation because of the chakra alone and he ain't even have control of this form even some of the upper forms of the tailed beast chakra cloaks could risk death if the tail beast decides to take away your chakra too quickly so basically you gotta hope your tail beast isn't annoying and wants to cooperate with you. There's not much you can really do on your side. Then you also need to hope that no one wants to do any experiments on you because the government would definitely be interested in someone with enhanced healing, strength, speed, etc. And for the next power on the list, after some further deliberation, I've concluded that having a Susano would probably not be super crazy as one would expect. Besides the whole going blind part which would likely be a pretty bad drawback, the Susano also has another deterrent from using it. This thing causes so much pain for the user. Sasuke said it was like pain in every single cell in his body and it only gets worse with the higher stages. You're not gonna be getting some free giant samurai armor that you're gonna be chilling inside of. As long as you're in it, you're gonna be feeling that pain. Then there's the fact that a perfect Susano is like 100 meters tall, so good luck maneuvering that around. I guess you could use it like Sasuke, i.e. use it like a taxi, but then again, your chakra consumption will be cooked. If you can get through all those caveats, you got yourself a pretty good power. Will you be able to handle all those inconveniences though? Most likely not. This last power I want to cover is gonna be handled a bit differently than the others in this video. It has a very special place in my heart. When I was young, 
younger, I always liked the characters with super speed, like the Flash, Sonic, Quicksilver, etc. And I always thought it would be really good to have super speed in real life. Like I could run at the speed of sound, that sounds amazing. And you know, after growing older, I realized that super speed is so busted it's not even funny. And you don't even need that much speed to be able to win any fight for real. But after I realized this, I realized that all these shows I was watching growing up were all alive. And yes, this is going to be me ranting about super speed and media, not about how effective it is in real life. Cause the orangutan at the zoo probably knows that running fast is really effective. Super speed seems to be so worthless in these shows. They always have the hero lose so many brain cells when they have this power, or they'll have the speech to be like the jokester of the group. So he automatically seems weaker than he actually is. Like I know it's a hard power to ride around, but you shouldn't let anyone get away if you're so fast that everything seems to stop around you. L like look at this. You should be winning every single battle. Remember when Wally beat Alex Luthor fused with Brainiac with pure speed blitzes? This is how every fight in real life would go if you had even a fraction of Wally's speed. Like give me super speed and I'm taking it. But if you give me the CW Flash's intelligence as well, then don't even offer it to me. I I'd rather get the tail quirk. You're basically giving yourself a lobotomy for the chance to run super fast sometimes. They always have speedsters lose brain cells and act like they can't react to anything being thrown at them when they in fact can easily react and be untouchable. The only cons if you can even call them cons with super speed are time travel and super immense speed. Immense speed is only a con because it's kind of just overkill. Like if you can run at 1% of the speed of light, you'll be more than fast enough to deal with most situations. You don't need to be gathering as much speed as possible to become some sort of god of speed. And if you constantly think that you need more speed get help or please apply to be a flash villain or something time travel will be kind of a negative because we don't know how it functions in our own world so you would actively be trying to learn about the implications and consequences when trying to make changes to the past you'll probably make and erase a couple of alternate timelines in the process and no one got time for that pun not intended and if you try to operate on movie rules you're actively self-sabotaging honestly the cw flash and other media have ruined super speed so much that i don't even want it anymore in theory you should be able to stop all crime but there has to be some sort sort of curse or equivalent exchange when you get this power. The inevitable random IQ drops could truly be the end of some people's lives. Now there are definitely other powers I want to cover, like Maharaga's adaptation or the Titan Shifters, but that'll be for another part, assuming y'all want another installation. I really do like discussing these hypotheticals in our own lives. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you so much for all the support on the channel. With that being said, have a great day, peace out.